Hey, what is up guys? It's your voice feed here and today we're starting It's not like a guest that right I guess it's a bit of a different thing that I want to do like from time to time probably every other week once a month something like that and it's where you guys submitted so I opened up discord this morning because I told you guys on yesterday's video or two videos ago to <laughs> To send me games where you wanted me to critique your items. That's what we're doing here today I'm gonna look at your games and critique your items, but you guys send me replays and so many people send me replays Which is freaking awesome. I think it's like 12 people so I have a couple of games. We're going to go over five here today, which is a lot. This will be a longer video, but nonetheless, I hope you guys are excited. I'm going to cover why you should go certain items based on matchups, based on the game state, et cetera, et cetera. And let's get into it. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. All right, so the first person we're going to be covering here is TechKiller67, and let's read the message he sent me. So he said, I played safely in Arc Warden with my friend, who is Venge, and I think we did okay in the laning stage. It was a hard lane, but I was trying to get the Maelstrom before Midas for mixed damage against Huskar so I could jungle faster. It seemed like I was getting items, and we were doing alright later into the game, but then we lost, and I thought we could have won. I bought Satanic to stay alive, but the Huskar taunt is tough, it definitely is, to play into. I was going to get BKB, but his taunt goes through BKB. don't really know how to itemize against it. Wow, if you didn't buy... I'm not going to lie, man. <laughs> I'm glad you sent that message. I can already tell you, if you didn't buy BKB this game, you are freaking... Th There's no way. You can't man up the Huskar without BKB. You can't man... The Brood could maybe solo kill you because of the mischance and his lifesteal. Like, you have to buy BKB. Even if you get taunted by Huskar. If you have a BKB, you don't take Burning Spears damage, you don't get disarmed, and you can man up after. Because the majority of Huskar's damage is, is largely Burning Spears and his ability to disarm you. Even Life Break, I... Does the damage go through BKB? I don't know if the damage goes through. I know the taunt and the slow goes through, but I don't know if the damage does. You guys can let me know on that, but that in and of itself is definitely something to think about. So let's skip ahead and look through the game, see what's going on. So definitely, I mean, I'm not going to cover too much about just like Dota. I obviously could kind of flame you for your like overall farm. Honestly, your CS is incredibly low. So that's something I would look into, but all right, let's get into your items. So you end up going for a Midas Maelstrom. You went Maelstrom into the Midas, which I think it's a little weird, but not terrible. I honestly don't hate the concept. Uh, it's somewhat reasonable to me. So that's not necessarily a problem. All right, so in the following items, you went for bots, which I think is okay. Uh, the thing about Arc Warden that I've been learning as of late is that even after they nerfed him where the ulti does half damage when you're far apart, is it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a Mjolnir, then you can still clear creep waves throughout the map. So that I'm totally fine with. I'm, I like the bots Mjolnir. I think it's the general right idea or most simple idea when it comes to playing this hero. However, this Bloodthorn is just... It's not even that the Orchid is bad. I think, especially if the enemy team isn't buying Dispels, which... Okay, I mean, he doesn't have one on the Hoodwink. Huskar doesn't have one. Brood does. He has BKB. Jug does. So... It's not an insane game to have an Orchid in and of itself. It's okay. Like, it's all right. Against the Huskar, it's honestly all right because he's not going BKB. But I think my bigger problem with this match is this Mage Slayer. I I just don't understand why you have this. Like, yeah, I, I don't. I, there's nothing else to say about that. Like, I, I just do not understand why you'd buy a Mage Slayer. Because it doesn't let you man up the Huskar, really. Especially assuming he has a BKB. He didn't buy one this game, but he should have. Uh, it doesn't let you man up the Brood, it doesn't help you against Jug, you're probably not really hitting Jakiro and Hoodwink in a way where it stops their damage, and you might be like, oh, but I want the magic resist. You need a BKB, I, there's nothing else for me to say here. There's no way you walk into the fight. I mean, it's just, like, however the fights play out, unless the enemy team is complete ass, which <laughs> maybe they are against their heroes, you can't play the fight. And they don't have the best jump, right? You might be like, oh, but they don't have that great of jump speed so can he get away with it right oh my huskar kills himself well this is one way to get away with bkb if they kill themselves but the bigger thing to understand is that like <laughs> okay you could have bought any items and killed them there but the biggest thing to understand is like what enables your hero against their heroes and the reality is, is you absolutely needed to go bkb this game um in order to function or the other thing you could do is you could go bloodthorn but then you would have to completely double down on split pushing which is Okay, or, you know, or looking for opportunities where the enemy team splits up, which once again, like that's an option, you know, that absolutely is an option in Dota, 
where you buy items that don't team fight. The problem is most players don't have the competency to make that work. I'll be I'll keep it real with you guys. Most players don't have the ability to skip items like BKB and make it look good. Yeah, and this this Scotty, I just it's just another thing where it's like I understand you're buying it for Huskar. And you could also argue, oh, it, it's like works against Healing Ward and it works against Brood's Insatiable Hunger. So it's like, it's not some horrible Scotty game, but once again, you can't even use it that well because of, you basically can't even use it that well because of the fact that you don't have a BKB. It's going to be hard for you to just man up, which is kind of what Scotty is. It's it's largely a man up item. And so you might end up killing them throughout this game. Honestly, this is a low more game. I think this is like 2K or something, 2K, 3K. So like people will just overextend. And so you can kind of get away with bad item builds due to poor fight selection from the enemy. And I think a lot of players think then like, oh, if the enemy's bad and I can get away with higher DPS, then it's better than BKB. And they're like, speed, you're wrong. I know my pups. Guys, you don't understand. You're limiting your DPS by not going BKB. People think like BKB is some purely defensive item. That is not even remotely the reason like why you buy BKB on most right clickers. The reason why you buy BKB on most right clickers is so you can do damage. You can't even click the enemy because you have to be so afraid all the time, right? You can never man up. So like you have to always just play Giga backline. And you might be like, oh, but that's the point of Arc Warden. The point of Arc Warden is the Giga backline. Why would I need a BKB? It's like, yeah, but you don't have that great of attack range. You're not going to be freaking Dragonlance sniper level 25 talent sniper range away from them you're gonna have to get somewhat close and it's gonna mean you can't man up that well like even here i'm concerned if this brood has like his shit up which he kind of did he could have i don't know how this guy's also so under farmed on brood but if this is like a reasonably farmed brood and you have these items here and he clicks his q and mans up you're dead because you don't have black king bar another item you could have went here as well if you really did want to skip the bkb even though i'm obviously advocating against it i know people are like speed stop talking about it but if you were going to go this build, then I don't love the Scotty. I would prefer Silver Edge. It's also a counter to the Huskar, and it enables you to get onto the backline supports and solo kill them early on into the fight. And on top of that, it's just kind of like an answer to like Omni Slash. It's an answer to the Brood to some extent, because Brood's probably not going to buy detection. So it, it would let you also survive. It's not great against the Huskar Axe to an extent. Obviously, if you can Shadow Blade, if you see him before he gets it off, then you know he can't even ulti you. But you have to be careful, because if he gets it off, then you click Shadow Blade. His taunt will force you to come out of it, which is why you have to be a little bit careful about Shadow Blade against late game Huskar. And just because I, I want to show you guys, because he ends up losing this game, right? I want to show you guys the lack of BKB and why it actually matters, okay? Because the last four fights we just kind of watched were all in his own base with the enemy overextending. And as a result, he didn't get a single spell casted on him, ever. But this is why these builds don't work, because once you actually get to leave your base or think you can, then you actually get shit casted on you because you're out of your base. And let's take a look at what happens from his perspective. Gets gone on, Huskar disarms. That's a five second disarm. He has to AFK, can't hit him, All right? The illusion starts hitting him, the Huskar that is, breaks the Aegis, okay. All right, gets the Aegis, Huskar is Aegis. Now, illusion gets gone on, okay, whatever. It is what it is. He gets Bloodthorn, Gleitnir, Haunted, and you might be like, oh, so he would have died anyway, even if he had BKB. Well, no, because he wouldn't get disarmed. He wouldn't get Clive He wouldn't be affected by whatever the, this Cloak of Flames. And he wouldn't take Burning Spear damage. And he's not even that low, right? So arguably as well, he didn't even have to go Scotty like we talked about. And this could be a this could be a BKB Satanic, and then he could click BKB in turn. But again here, he has Satanic. He pops it, but now he's... You might be like, oh, but he gets Bash. Yeah, but he would have Satanic going here. It could have hit enough but he's just getting slowed. He's getting slowed to shit, can't kite out, and it just doesn't work. Like, it doesn't work, because if he had the original BKB and his illusion had a BKB, he likely could have just killed him twice. He could have just manned up through all the disables, all the slows. Like, slows matter as well, because his ability to kite out is just not there either. Um, so yeah, just a couple things to mention. It, it just matters. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean, decent satanic usage. Probably should have Bloodthorn the Huskar there, so he couldn't W you. But all right, let's move on to the next replay. Up, oh, we have... <laughs> We have a level 30 brood. <laughs> but either way, Salmon Cannon Deluxe, which is quite the name. It said, I'm a 3k brood spammer. This game, I went more or less standard brood build. I feel like I always go this build with very few exceptions. I try not to get hung up on items. That's good. Honestly, I definitely think uh, it's less important than, than most people think. But I try not to get hung up on items unless someone I respect tells me, 
to think about it or try something else. I'd love to hear your thoughts on my build gameplay since I'm always looking to improve. Cool. I've actually played a decent amount of rude games as of late. Funny enough, like three or four. So I have some opinions on this hero. I have some ideas on this hero. Uh, but yeah, I'm curious to see what you do. All right, so getting to the items, I definitely have a bit of a, a bit of a gripe with your overall item build here. So he ends up going for an Orchid and a BKB. Doesn't go the Corrosion, which honestly, I, I don't play enough Brood to really know if you have to go Corrosion and how it feels. I don't have a vibe on that. And so I'm not going to make too much of a comment on that. Um, you guys could comment on the Discord. I mean, in the comments, if you, you want to give your opinion on that. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions on the comments in this video. But either way, I don't like the Bloodthorn. This is probably my biggest issue with your build here. I just don't really understand it. So my issue with Bloodthorn, we'll qu take a quick look at the stats from, you know, Bloodthorn to Orchid. You, and, and a lot of people might be thinking, oh, but it, it, it amps the spiders, right? All the spiders get the crit, which is which was cool and good. The issue I have with it is Bloodthorn is a pretty expensive item, right? It's a it's a 6.8k gold item. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but it's an upgrade from Orchid, which it is, which it is, but it still does include a 925 gold recipe, which is pretty expensive, and a Mage Slayer, which is not a bad brood item. It's actually a pretty decent brood item. It's 20 attack speed, magic resistant damage. It's not bad, and it gives the active, but the problem is it doesn't let you man up to certain archetypes of heroes. Okay, so my only concern in this game is your lack of armor, uh, which is generally solved by Assault with Curess on this hero, is not going to be addressed with the Bloodthorn. The Bloodthorn also does not make you right-click much harder. It gives you from the Orchid, it gives you... Well, no, it actually doesn't give you any bonus from the Orchid, so it just gives you the flat damage from Orchid and, and um, the Mage Slayer. So paying for the recipe does not amp your damage unless you're getting the active off, which once again is a good active, like it is, and especially for Brood, like it's a reasonable active, you just have to target the right heroes, which he could do. The only problem with going something like Bloodthorn is by the time you usually get it, a lot of heroes have BKBs. Okay, this guy's going Ags for some shitty reason, but they have BKBs. This guy bought a Yules for some reason, but you know, the point is that there's going to be a lot more dispels and it's a lot harder to use. And so my only concern would be if you have a right clicker, there's some like, like Scotty or Luna, uh, um, there's some like TB or Luna or Medusa, or even a PA that you might need to address then consider going an AC a bit earlier uh, to address those heroes. However, I can totally see the viability of Bloodthorn in certain games. But even here, for instance, right, as this fight develops, it, you might have died because of like a gameplay thing and not an item thing. That's 100% possible. Also, one thing to keep in mind is the shard. The shard is pretty busted. Uh, we'll talk about that more in a bit. But yeah, like here, this PA goes on him and he just doesn't man up well. Like he, he dies in like two crits because Mage Slayer just doesn't give you any armor, to be frank. All right, finally, finally, an item that I can really disagree with, Basher. I I just hate this Basher. I, there's, nothing, there's nothing else for me to say. I don't think it works with how Brood plays as a hero. And I know people are going to be like, Speed, are you really disagreeing with a level 30 Brood? The thing is, I see this a lot with heroes that are like um, turn or sustain based heroes. For instance, I see a lot of Slarks that buy Bashers and the Bashers just dog shit. And they might be like, oh, but I need to lock people down. It's the, the thing is like, Bashers not that good of a lockdown. It's like, it's a 1.5 second bash. And, and that is relatively long, especially for certain heroes like Phantom Assassin, who can kill you in that duration. But that's not what Brood does. Like, that's not what Brood does. Brood already has a slow, you have a Bloodthorn. It doesn't let you man up to this PA once again, right? At all. It doesn't let you man up to her at all. It doesn't really help with Storm because you can't really right click Storm and it doesn't let you kill DK because he's too tanky. So you might be asking then who, who does the Basher kill? The answer is like the supports and like kind of like maybe Storm if the guy sucks, right? <laughs> like, like, so what, what do I think he should go? I mentioned already, I think he should just have an AC into like an MKB this game. I think the best way to play Brood by a long shot is to itemize, and he even takes the talents I agree with. I, I mean, I think maybe the edgy is better than the spin web recharge time. I don't play enough Brood to, to like understand why you would even take this web recharge time. I feel like you don't need it most games. I feel like the edgy is just good. It's so much edgy, but that's besides the point. 400 health, insatiable hunger talent. I like those talents. I think they're, the, they're really strong. And then I think you need to itemize to just be able to man up to people. I think if you don't itemize man up items, then you can't even bash people because it's hard to man up to a lot of heroes. Like you might bash them and then you just lose the fight anyway because you just don't have the items to go in. You don't have the items to tank the initial burst, the initial go. And even if you get on top of people, you can't even kill them because you don't right click that hard. Um, so for instance, in this fight, I mean, this is honestly just kind of more bad fight selection if you end up dying here. But like you just insta die, right? To some PA and these items don't keep you alive. And by the way, you guys might be thinking, oh, does that mean I should never buy basher at all? 
So for instance, I think his inventory now looks pretty good because now he has a considerable amount of attack speed and it's getting to the point in the game where he hits hard enough and has another DPS item. So getting a bash is more valuable. Basically, I think an early basher on the majority of Dota heroes as a third item is a horrible idea and overpurchased like crazy by your average Dota player. All right, next up we have a Shadow Shaman. We got Dark Mango. I like that name. It's a good one. <laughs> on the Shadow Shaman. All right, let's start with starting item build for this one. So first things first, I don't mind these items. The only thing I would be curious on is how you're going to deal with your mana problems throughout the game. I'm not going to look through the laning stage, but basically if you are going to go in item build that doesn't revolve around mana, even, you know, stick gives a little, then you really, really need to buy uh, a clarity. So just keep that in mind throughout the lane. Otherwise, you'll likely not be able to cast your spells very much. All right, the next thing is you rushed a magic wand. Uh, my issue with this most likely is that you're leaning against a life stealer who literally does not cast abilities. And then the other hero is a Grimstroke who only casts a little bit. So you don't really need magic wand. You're much better off getting an earlier mana boots, never upgrading the stick and just getting an early Aether Lens. Because the thing about Shadow Shaman and, well, the thing about magic wand as an item is it's like a, it's like more of a, like a man up slash like bait ish item, but Shaman doesn't do that for the most part. He can a little, but just be careful. I, I would recommend getting your mana boots a little bit earlier. All right, next up, it looks like you rush shard over Aether Lens. I don't, basically the reason why I don't like this is the shard is the same cost as Aether Lens. And I know people are like, what? What do you mean speed? One is literally 1400 gold and the other one is 2000 gold. It's not even close. It's 2200 gold actually. The thing is mana boots, which he has, mana boots, which he has, is the 800 gold orb, right? And so the Aether Lens is like only 875 gold more expensive. And so the only value you get out of the shackles or the shard is the four serpent wards, which is good. And honestly, I'm a big fan of the shard. I, I love this shard on Shaman. I think it's so good. It helps you clear waves. It does a lot of damage. It gives you the cast range. Please though, buy the freaking Aether Lens first. It is 10 times better. It enables you to cast serpent wards effectively. Hex is literally the worst cast range in Dota, kind of. <laughs> and so, yeah, even, even Aether Shock is not a good cast range ability. So it's very hard to stay in position as Shaman if you don't buy an Aether Lens. All right, so the next item you go for is a Blink Dagger, which is very standard for this hero, and I'm absolutely okay with it. The only thing I would say is keep in mind that in some games, your team will already have a hard initiator and you do not have to go Blink Dagger in those games, especially in a game like this where the enemy team is a Life Stealer uh, or, a, or you're like a Viper, right? Pretty kiteable heroes, heroes that lack the hard disable. In general, the enemy team kind of lacks disable. It's hard for them to stay on top of people. If you buy a four staff and you click it on your teammates, it's very likely they'll be able to disengage even if they get shackle shot because there's like no follow up, right? Or no good follow up. You can also just get people away from Viper and Life Stealer in general, and you can kite them out. So if you don't have to be the hard initiator, just keep it in mind that the Aether Shock is good. It doesn't mean that, oh, if you have one Blink Initiator on your game, Blink isn't good. You still can go Blink, right? His, his rating as a Blink this game, if he still can go Blink, just keep in mind that the Force Staff is a good option, especially if your team has no other save. Other than that, I'm totally fine with the Blink Dagger. All right, here's where things get a little sketchy and I hardcore disagree with your items. I honestly think Shaman Axe is one of the worst Axe in the game. I know that's a hot take because it's like such a, it's an Axe that have, people have been buying for forever. And it works with the uh, the shard, so it does like it gives you really good wave clear, and it has its place in Dota. But basically, the issue with the sh with the the issue with Ags is here. I'll, I'll go I'll go to the next team fight, and we'll see if it matters. All right. So as we watch them taking the enemy team's racks, I'll quickly cover this. Basically, like the dilemma with going Ags is you have no defensive capability, and you might be like, why would I need that? I'm a, I'm the initiator. It's like, do you want to get off multiple shackles or do you want to get off one shackle? Right, that, that's the point. And so when you buy an Ags, it's as, it's expensive as shit, right? You're not gonna get it until like 10 minutes after you buy your, your previous item. And so essentially it just hardcore delays major timings, right? It's, it's one of those things where you don't have a four staff, you don't have a glimmer. It's like, okay, you might literally lose a team fight because you couldn't disengage from a life stealer that's running at you. Now in this game, they're 26,000 net worth ahead. So whatever happens in the team fight, they're probably gonna win at this point. But if the game is close and you buy an Ags, you're just gonna feed. And I can assure you, especially if Dark Mango is watching this, he probably experiences this when he's buying Ags and the game is close. If he has Aether Lens Blink, he's just gonna die early on into every fight. He's not gonna get off high value shackle shots and the hero is not gonna feel that good. 
All right, next up we got Eosh. I think that's how you say it. On the CK, we got some wild freaking items here. Uh, right off the bat, he rushed an armlet, which the dilemma with this is CK is a lane dominator. So when you rush armlet, it delays your ability to dominate the lane. You might be like, oh, but what about Helm of the Iron Will speed? CK doesn't need it. His armor's fine. It's not that bad. He doesn't need the sustain because of his E. You need an item that makes you do damage. What is that item? It's power treads. And you might be like, oh, but just buy the gloves of haste from the armlet. Yeah, it's not horrible. I think rushing armlet on CK is frankly not that bad. It's not the worst thing you could do. I just think that no stick is definitely questionable because his hero has mana problems. He bought a soul ring, so you might be like, oh, he doesn't need the stick. The thing is, soul ring is literally four times the cost or three times the cost in between. And so, yeah, this item build just doesn't optimize the early laning stage of CK. Uh, and so, yeah, just keep that in mind, guys. You have to think if my hero wins early on and wins minute one to minute two, the best items I can buy are usually stick, boots, and upgrades like gloves of haste. All right, the next thing he goes is an immediate shard, which, uh, I mean, eh, eh, eh. the reason why it's meh is you're just not that tanky. Like, you don't have a wand, which is horrible on this hero because your hero's hella mana problems. You don't have a Sanj. It's like even in this upcoming team fight here, like you didn't even throw your stun, so you didn't even get any value out of the shard. It's like, it's just not an item that you rush. You want to be tanky enough where you can insta-kill people. You want to have a magic wand and you should be buying components for just items that you make you a bit tankier and then picking up the shard. Because the thing is just to like really, really double down on that before we move on to the next item is your shard is based off your current strength, right? Because it creates a copy of you. So if you're not that strong yet, then the shard is just not that good. All right, the next item he ends up going for here is Echo Saber. The reason why I like Echo Saber to this game over other items that you could go on CK, the other items being Blink Dagger or Sanjin Yasha or even something like Shadow Blade. The reason why I think the Echo Saber is good here is, well, he's against a lot of heroes that do not have Disengage. So against heroes like Storm and Puck, um, even supports such as like Winter Wyvern, for instance, heroes that can kind of disengage from you or get you off of them, the Echo Saber isn't as good because you slow them and then it doesn't matter. So obviously this game, that's not the case. If you get on top of Necro, you can kind of hit him, especially if he doesn't have Ghost Shroud. Lina, the slow is great. Wraith King, the slow is good. Zeus, the slow is fantastic. I guess he has Heavenly Jump now, which sometimes I forget. But yeah, the point is, is that it is a solid game for the Echo Saber. All right, so the next item he ends up going for here is Heart of Tarrasque, which I don't hate. My only dilemma with it this game is the enemy team has two potential, like, quote unquote, hard counters. It doesn't make the item worthless, and I do think it is solid overall because they'll have a hard time getting through it for the most part. But the thing that counters really high HP heroes on the enemy team is Zeus's shard. It deals nine, uh, it makes his spells do 9% of current health, which is obviously good because it's just percentage damage. And then the other one, of course, being Heartstopper Aura. So it makes it a bit of a worse game to just get a, like a item that doubles down on this, but hurt to some extent counters out, right? The, uh, the Heartstopper Aura, so it's not terrible. And it is just a solid item in this hero overall. So I definitely do not hate it. But the alternatives usually to a hero like CK are AC, especially if the enemy team has a lot of physical damage because uh, CK can lack some armor, right? So that's sometimes a dilemma. And then Sanjin Yasha is another great item for this hero, especially if the enemy team has a lot of chain stun. One thing to keep in mind is that heart with no Sanj is honestly a big sin in, in my opinion. You guys can go into a demo lobby right now. Sanj, especially on a hero like CK, is kind of a must buy in my opinion because it gives you 20% health regen and lifesteal lamp. This lifesteal lamp works on your E, which is fantastic. Then you buy this heart and it's like you have a ton of regen from heart and you're life stealing for a ton and you don't have a song. So you don't get a 20% bonus on heart and on your crit for only 2K gold. And it gives you status resist, which is a great thing. And 16 strength, which is obviously great on CK as well. So. In my opinion, this lack of Sanj, even if it was just a casual Sanj and not Sanj and Yasha is great, but even Sanj and Yasha is just a freaking fantastic item on CK because the movement speed from getting uh, from target to target is great. The attack speed is solid. It's just a good item on CK. Even the Agi is useful because it gives you two armor. And he ends up queuing up a Manta here, which I definitely do not like. And the reason why I don't like it is Ember Spirit kills the Mantas, Zeus kills the Mantas, Necro has a Radiance, and he just naturally kills the Mantas. So it's not like a great Manta game. The Mantas are just going to die too fast to really get any value out of them. And once again, he's passing up on the Sanj. So I don't like this. Another item I can't believe I even forgot. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what item am I forgetting to talk about? Freaking BKB, man. 
Why does everyone not buy BKB? Did Legion buy one? Oh my god, what the heck? <laughs> Storm didn't buy one, did Oh my god, did anyone in this game have a BKB? Alright, Ember has one. Which is maybe the hero that, nah, it's a great game for Ember to have BKB, so it's a good purchase. But either way, um, you know, this is definitely an, a game where you could easily argue for the BKB on the CK here. I think realistically, if, if it was a pro game, you would see the CK by armlet BKB this game. Why? You might be asking so you can hit people, so you can stun people. A lot of people think, oh, but it's not a good CK item because it doesn't keep the illusions alive. The thing is, if you can micro your illusions a little, what you do on, on CK is you ulti, you keep the illusions away from your main hero, and then when you're going in, you click armlet, you click your BKB, and then you can actually get your stun and pull off without getting disrupted, and then it pulls your illusions in from the back. And then if you're good enough, once again, you can cut your illusions out and essentially it keeps your illusions alive. So if you're a good player on CK, not only does BKB keep you alive, it also keeps your illusions alive as well. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see this fight play out. I'm curious to see how these mantas work. I haven't done this for really the other replays, but I'm a little bit curious. So fight breaks out, you can see immediately, like just with a couple of casts of spells from Zeus and just Necrophos existing, he just loses a huge chunk of health. And by the time he gets his ulti off, now the illusions are already half HP. And they're not really going to do too much. He clicks his Manta. These Mantas instantly die. And he just can't live. And so you can see the item build. It just does not work. The Lifesteal Amp is not there from the Sanj. The BKB is obviously not there. And so the heart just doesn't do shit this game. And uh, yeah, I think this build is a huge mistake. And last but certainly not least, we got QDBP on the Lifestealer. His starting item build looking good here. We got two Gauntlets, two Branches. We got the Tangos looking good. Definitely no complaints. As the leading stage progresses, he saves 1300 gold before buying an item. What the fuck? Buy, buy items, guys. Spend your gold. Don't save this much gold. What the hell? The, the, the items you buy throughout the lane drastically change how the lane plays out. You cannot hold your gold. It's going to make you lose the lane. Also, I don't really understand these components. He buys like a gloves of haste and then it like looks like he's buying armlet, but then he goes for phase boots and then he goes for wand, but it's definitely not a wand game. DK and Ricky... It's not a horrible stick lane, but it's not a great stick lane. I, I I would have just went for an early phase boots in this lane. Get some armor up against the DK. It'd let you man up. So the item build, honestly, these early items are just horrible. And just, just get phase boots in this lane. The only other item you could consider is if the lane is really easy, you can buy an orb of venom and you can trade a lot. All right, moving on. He went for armlet into Sanjin Yasha, which I like. I think this is a very standard and reasonable item on uh, item build on Lifestealer. The only item build that people go instead that I see sometimes is they'll go armlet into Sanj into Scotty if they have good Scotty matchups. But there's no good Scotty matchup this game. There's like literally not a single hero that Scotty really counters. And so, yeah, it's a fantastic game to go Sanj and Yasha, especially against something like DK and Shadow Shaman who have really hardcore stuns. Upgrading from the casual Sanj to the Sanj and Yasha is pretty important because it gives you a bonus 8% status resist. And going from 12% to 20% status resist can absolutely be the difference between surviving or not when you get jumped by these hard stun heroes. So I definitely like this item here, and it's definitely very important to buy Sanj. For instance, maybe you live here because of the should have clicked your thing earlier. But even for instance, right there, right? If we see it play out, the Sanj and Yasha, the stun uh, reduced duration from the CK or the DK allows him to get off his rage and potentially get off an infest here and live. There you go. So love the item build immediately coming into play there. And maybe even letting you kill a DK here, potentially. Maybe a little turn. There we go. Right? Huge, huge deal. All right, so next up, he ends up going for a Silver Edge here, which I actually really like. I think it's, um, honestly, I think it's super reasonable. It's a great item this game. It works great against the Phantom Assassin and her blur. It works great against the DK's armor. And it can even be used to get on top of the Zeus or the Shaman, two heroes that when you click Rage, you can solo kill. So I'm actually a big fan of this. It's a good mix of DPS. It's a just, yeah, just solid to me. I, I definitely like it. Uh, are you done? Okay. <laughs> There's definitely some slot issues here though. I, I will admit like any single time I see an inventory that literally is two empty slots getting into this stage of the game, it's once again something that I usually cringe at. A lack of wand, a lack of wind lace, things like this. It's just, nah, nah. It just it's just ugly. Cause like these, what people don't understand in Dota is that cheap items are the most effective items per cost, right? By a long shot. And you might be like, oh, but they delay the bigger items. No, they don't. Like wind lace makes you run from camp to camp faster. Like, the movement speed you get from Windlace is probably going to get you 250 gold of value in and of itself. And then it also lets you engage on targets, disengage from targets, 
it, it's just movement speed, right? And movement speed is just good. So it's like one of those things where small items really, really matter. And it's something you should definitely consider no matter what hero you're playing. Our next item he ends up going for here is the MKB. I understand it. It's a great game for MKB. It's good against DK. It's good against PA. I think it's honestly super solid. I can get behind it. The only other item I would like consider this game maybe is going BKB because if you get jumped by Ricky, uh, it's, it's actually kind of a counter to life stealer. You know, it's one of those heroes that counters rage. And so, yeah, uh, you could go BKB. It sounds insane, but honestly, with Silver Edge, you do plenty of damage and it's often just about staying alive. The other item you could go is AC here just to make sure that PA can't kill your team or kill you and you can man up better to her. But the MKB is fine as long as you just make sure you don't get bursted from full because you could get bursted from full this game. Basically, when you're playing heroes like Lifestealer and Slark, you need to determine whether or not you die easily. And if you do die easily, you often want to buy items that allow you to frontline and bait and basically like turn the fight with half HP instead of going more DPS. Can you get away with DPS this game? You can, you just have to be careful in team fights. All right, and finally, the last time he goes here is Scotty, which I think is bad, to be frank. It's like okay against DK form and like DK's regen, but the reason why I think it's bad is I think BKB is 10 times better. Like all you need to do is stay alive, make sure you can hit people. So I think BKB is literally just 10 times better, which sounds insane because it's like you have rage, but it's like at 7.5 second duration, you know? Like it, it's, you could just have two BKBs, which is like insane, right? It's just insane. There's nothing else to say. Or the other item you could buy is Satanic. I just think Satanic, this, it's just like, it's not a good Scotty game. If they had a Dusa or a Luna, I think Scotty's great, but they don't. There's no range hero that it counters. I don't even know if this PA has a Satanic. She doesn't. It just doesn't, it's just not that good, frankly. It's just bad. The other item you could go some games is Nullifier. If they have like a lot of Ghost Scepters and Yules and shit, that it would be a good item here as well. But the Scotty, it's it's not horrible, but it could even be an AC, right? Because like the, the armor that Scotty gives is three. AC, I think, gives like 15 or 20. And against against PA, sometimes Lifestealer can have slight armor problems. Not horrible. It's just not something super to be concerned about, which is why I think, honestly, if I was to buy, to buy an item at this point in the game and I had an Aegis... Oh, why is your MKB swapped out? You should probably swap out your boots or the Scotty. You need this MKB too much. But either way, um, yeah, I think you should probably just be a Satanic. That's most likely what I would buy this game to just man up to the PA because you already have enough armor. Like, I think... I, like a comfortable amount of armor for me most games is like 25 to 30. Once you hit that range, I don't really think you need another item, armor item most games. I think you're better off just buying like lifesteal, uh, especially with a Sanchi and Yasha because you, it gets amped. All right, that's going to be all for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was super freaking long. Uh, if anyone stayed to the end, you're a real one. And uh, yeah, hopefully you learned a lot. Hopefully you took some things out of this. You're going to change up and improve your item builds and stop skipping BKB, you animals. Why does everyone not? I don't think I watched a single replay with a BKB this game. CK didn't buy it. Am I forgetting? CK didn't buy it. Lifestealer didn't buy it. Uh, who else? Ark Warden didn't buy it. I don't even remember the other ones. <laughs> All right. Th thank you guys so much, Roderick. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.